hey, 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 welcome back to my channel. We're just laughing because I've got to sit and do this in front of Heather. This is Heather. Um, we are out to do the Moira Anderson case. All joking aside, we've had a wee blather about it tonight. Yeah. Um, this is a case that's been highlighted on our page, but if you look in Google and things, there's not much information other than the foundation and the other things that people are saying about it. So we've decided to take it right the way back, start from where Moira went missing. We're on location at the moment. We're sitting in Murray Hall Street. Um, Moira went... So Moira Anderson was an 11 year old girl that went missing on the 23rd of February 1957 from Cope Bridge. Now she left her grands in Murray Hall Street. She was going down to get butter for her gran, her uncle Daster. Her gran was very, very unwell. Later that day she'd planned to go with her friends along to the cinema at five o'clock. So there was a plan in place for Moira. But again, back in those days, you if you get asked by an adult to do something you went and done it now the problem was there was a massive blizzard that day where the buses cars everything was off the roads um and she obviously had to wrap up warm and take herself a 10 minute walk from Murray Hall Street now we'll take you to Laird Street as well um but we're going to start in Murray Hall Street so let's have a wee look to where Moira first took off and what I'm going to do is we are going to use the spirit box now just to make us aware just to be again respectful to the people in this street we'll pop the spirit box on but we can't really we don't want to annoy people basically so we, what we want you to do is comment below because it's your guys comments that's going to build the story for the rest of this case and um, what we'll do is we'll put the spirit box on we will ask a few questions um, and what we'll also do is we'll then hear, hear sorry <laughs> head to <laughs> Laird Street do you want to add anything? Um, no, just like, other than she went to a nearby co-op, it was a less than a 10 minute walk. So that was in Laird Street. That was in Laird now, Street. Now, when we get there, we'll fill you in to why it probably held the case back for so long. And another reason we want to do these videos, um, to highlight the case for what it is today. Um, because there's a lot changed from the day and hour she went missing. So guys, this is Mary Hall Street. This is the old St. Patrick's High School, um, which is now Port Bridge High. So we are just walking along, if you look down the bottom there, um, to where Moira would have left. Now I'm not going to take you down to the exact house, but it's about two or three houses just down here. Um, so she, when we were coming up here I was thinking there's two ways she could come out to head down towards the West Park. We have crossed over the road um, purposely because she, this would be exactly the road that Moira Anderson would have took. Now, as you can see, that is a big long road. There's another opening at the bottom there, but because the house is so far up, I would expect you to come down this way. Now, if you look over there, you'll see the top of Coat Bridge High. Um, sorry, Coat Bridge College. Now, we're going to get to the middle of this hill. In fact, we're going to walk to the bottom of this hill to doing Beth Park entrance and we're just going to stand in there and do the spirit box. Now the reason I'm saying it is all that other part was derelict at the time so it was just like a big bit of grass that she'd been walking across to go to Laird Street um, and we'll take these over to Laird Street. I think we'll just do the full walk Aye. Um, and we'll take these over and see but we'll do the spirit box next when we get to the bottom of this hill. We've just made it to the bottom of the hill Fast time for you guys, not fast time for us. <laughs> we are getting our steps in. Um, now it's a Saturday night here, so it's still quite busy, but I'm hoping because it's a Saturday night, everybody's out and about, so all these wee haunts should be pretty quiet. So we're just going to stand in here. So we've crossed the road, so that would have been all dairy like land where I'm presuming she directly went across that way. We'll go that way in a minute, but we're going to come into the good old Dumbass Park just to start off by doing the spirit box. Now, because of the noise, it's given us no choice but <laughs> to have to keep that. Now, you're on the pitch black. Heather, can you... This is a torch, by the way. <laughs> we do have a torch on. Um, but we're going to find a wee spot. Just there's a wee opening down at the college here that I'm really inclined to go to. Um, so we're going to go down there. Oh, my word. Um, <laughs> I said to Heather, getting out of the car, should I bring my glasses? Nah, do you need them? Nah. <laughs> I really think I should have. Um, the it really, really is. <laughs> so, again, this has all been derelict here, but I just feel this park has a significance, but maybe not to Moira as such, but the connections um, that we're going to dive into in this case. As I said, she was 11 years old. It was two weeks before her 12th birthday. Um, it was actually her mum's birthday. 
Um, so again, when she went missing, they were expecting for her to show up. Some people said she was quite a troubled little girl, but overall, when you look at the reports, I don't think she was. I think she was just a bit of a tomboy um, and quite set in her ways. Now, Moira had two other sisters as well. Her mum didn't originally come from Coatbridge. She came from Fife, but her dad came from Coatbridge. Um, and again, like most kids, it's just having fun in life, and right. especially in that day and age, so much respect for adults that if you were asked to do something, you did it, and you were rewarded with nice things after it. Right, okay, I'm just going to do the spirit box here. I'm going to let you see. It's pitch black. I don't actually think it's able to see anything, but that's how far down we are. Got our college on the... Right here, right, let's just keep these on and we'll get this going. If Moira's spirit's here or she can help us from here and guide us where to go next, spirit, please bring it through in the spirit box. Moira, can you tell us anything about your whereabouts? Who's there? Who's there? Moira, can you guide me to where you... Oh my god, look in front of us. I know you can't see. Can you see that, Heather? Yeah. What is that? Uh, oh my god. <laughs> oh, there's a path to get out <laughs> there. <laughs> right? <laughs> we are not... It's like a wee... Oh, Was that you? No. Right, okay. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> right, just stand here. We need to breathe this. <laughs> I'm going to say, I have had a lot of good like, memories at Dunbeth Park and I've never had a bad vibe, but... I've never been here in the dark other than bonfire night and what I would say is we'll head back out this way because we're going to yeah. head to Laird Street. Um, it's quite, I'm getting quite uh, like a creepy... I feel we're getting pushed out the park. That's what I feel like and we won't go down that path because we've seen something. Right. It was just like a wee small. It was too small to be a, a 11 year old. <sighs> it was a creepy small. <laughs> is that eerie? That, 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 this, is that eerie? <laughs> this video's took a turn. Oh my god, it's a stick. <laughs> <laughs> so let's head to Laird Street. So while we're walking to Laird Street, I've just took loads of photos. We went back in there um, and I've took loads and loads of photos with a flash on and I just said to Heather, Heather went, can you see it? And I went, oh no sister, this is not the part of the job that you actually check out just now. <laughs> it's like when you go home and you're in your safe environment, that's when you start looking at that type of nonsense. <laughs> so we're just about to walk to Laird Street. Um, I, I'm not, we, we need to walk back up this way, we will not walk through the park, but yeah, like even if you can see here, Like, it's proper creepy. And there's a lot of boy racers with their 1.1 engines. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God love them. The cuteness overload. <laughs> One day <of> dryers. <laughs> We're just at St. Patrick's Primary. My old primary school, Morgan and Neasel Primary. Um, Laird Street is just across this road up here. So just to show, all that would have been derelict. So she would have walked, we were over there to begin with. But we walked along that way because of the Beth Park. She would have just walked diagonally right across here. So we're going to make it to Laird Street. I'm not sure exactly where that co-op would have been, but we'll certainly go up one way and down the other to see if we can work it out. We'll pop the spirit box on again. Um, the co-op said that she never came in. 
so it was thought that she never appeared at the court, but in reality they found out years and years later that the court was actually shut and the person was too frightened to see that they'd closed early because they might get into trouble with their boss, um, which again, another hindrance, massive hindrance to the case. Um, but she would have walked up here. So let's get to Lave Street. This is us in Lave Street. Guys, I do have a speaker for the spirit box, but I don't want to be putting it on in places like this because it's not fair and people live here. Um, we've still got different locations to go to. We are just looking for a photo of the court. Can you see it, yeah? Yeah, so that's what it looks like. Can we just show this to you? Yeah. I'm done. Sorry. <laughs> strange isn't it so it's all house in here um, again i was brought up in this area i used to walk this way to school every morning when i was <laughs> really young um so this makes sense though because if she was coming along here and the co-op was shut she's not going to go back on herself she's not going to go back the way she's because then it's going to take you to um Dumbass road which we're heading on in a wee second. Now, I don't know, what it would be? That looks like the thing. Let me see. Let me see. See the glass work? See the steam, stainless glass? Oh yeah. It's hard to see, but... Either that or... What's the wall like outside? No, oh, it's right on the pavement then. Oh, that's new builds. Or would be new builds. And it's right at the pavement. Because the building must have had to be close. This is what I love about doing cases like this, especially when you're out in location. I'm so sorry if that's your house, by the way. Um, <laughs> but it's so interesting to go back 65, 67 years. In 1957, this case took place. This is us heading towards the end of Weird Street. I'm inclined to say I feel that's what the court was. <laughs> Heather is the right person to have on your team with us. <laughs> There's some lovely houses up here. So I'm going to show you where I would presume that she would have walked all right and then we're heading back to the car to go to our next location and I'll tell you when we get there. So this is us coming out to Dumbeth Road. Now we're going to take you to Moira Anderson's own house. Um, so what we'll do is we'll stop but we're going to show you. So this is the street. Now Coat Bridge Main Street's down the bottom. Part of the quarter is still there. Um, but obviously this is where she would have walked down if the court wasn't opened. We are now heading to Eglinton Street. We are Moira Anderson and her parents and her sister's lives. Right, I'm going to take some photos of this, but I want to do a wee video on it. Now, my great granny Ty was in this home for a lot of years, so when we were younger, every Sunday we would come up to this house, and I swear, if I could buy this, I would. <laughs> that was her room over there, and I mean, Heather's just walked around it. It is proper spooky. Um, it used to be called them Beth Lodge. I don't know who owns it now, but it's just been left to derelict. But as we were walking around, it looks like there's a candle on. I'm going to show you. This is why I brought these back round. Heather's mesmerised with the window. <laughs> you might not see it. Again, it might just be our eyes, because that's the front window and we can't see it. But this side window, and it's probably just, actually, it's the street lights. It's the street lights. Yeah. Can't really see it in the camera. Do you want to No, it's all right. <laughs> I don't think I want to know. Um, Oh. It's actually different to the It is. There's a big back bit as well, as I said, it used to be a nursing home. And um, we're just heading to Eglinton Street, but I just thought I would add that in, because I spoke about it my life a wee while ago. And somebody actually told me who owned it. 
Um, but I, I would really need to get an OnlyFans for a house like that. Just be like... Look at this stained glass window. Oh, wow. Which is very similar to the co-op one. Oh, wow. Is that the name of the street room? We need to check that out. So this is... Um, the Olden Bay College. Right, let's go to Eglinton Street. So this is, this is us, sorry, in Eglinton Street and it was number... Seven. Maybe we shouldn't give it out actually, but we'll try your name. I'm just thinking that, yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry to the person, but this is... So again, straight up there, she would have walked right across that diagonally. So her house would have been here, running along here. We're going to try and work out the numbers just to kind of work out again where she'd have came from. All oh, right, okay. Yep, mm-hmm. So, yeah, just down here. Yeah, hopefully. So sad, isn't it? Right. What I'm going to do is, just as working by, I'm going to put the spirit box on again. Again, don't want to disturb any day or annoy any day, so I'm just putting it on as we go. String for cold. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Hey there. Get it? 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 Um, and we're heading back to the car. The car is parked up at the top of Coat Bridge High, and then we're heading to our next location. So get the kettle on, get snuggled up because we're easing these in gently. But now we're heading to locations where we think that Moira might be, or on the next set of travels. Now it's been said that she got onto a Baxter's bus, and it would have been the Kirkwood bus. Now that ends at the Old Monkland Terminus, which would have been at Old Monkland Cemetery. But also, um, it was said to have stopped at Carnbrough and also down where the Tarry Burn is. So if you already know the case, you get a rough idea where we're going next. Um, remember to um, subscribe, like and comment. Now, I know the spirit box is hard to hear him, but we're going to try and put it on the speaker. But we just don't want to be doing this in a built-up area. Um, again, try to be as respectful as possible, but again, I think it's so good that we're out in location. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. It feels good, doesn't yeah, it? it? Like, does. I don't get any bad vibes for this part, apart from the best part, but I feel the best part connects around... Oh, gosh. <laughs> I think it's another case on its own. Um, I have said it from day dot, I feel that Coat Bridge is very up there for the paedophile ring and where it started, especially in the early 50s, long before Moira Anderson went missing. Um, also, when Moira Anderson did go missing, Alex Gitshore was actually out in bail for rating the babysitter, sexual assault. Um, the babysitter, I think we'll just walk sh straight along. Because sure, yeah. this is where she would have walked across. Yeah. Um, he was never interviewed at the time. And again, it's public knowledge that um, Alex Gitshore's daughter thinks that or has said that he has said that he is the killer. He was responsible for Moira, Anders Moira Anderson's death. Um, as I woke up where Moira would have walked down in the day that she went missing at four o'clock in blizzards and snow. And as a psychic, I trusted my work and I beg to differ with that altogether. I think there were two, three other people, two other people involved. I do feel Alex Gitshore was involved, but I actually feel he was the lower key in it. And, but he wanted the... The notoriety. Uh, yep, the notoriety of being, again, responsible for this because it's such media. Now, another thing to point out as well, when Moira Anderson went missing, everybody looked for her, but the media didn't pick up on it until the May. So she went missing in February, and then BBC eventually put out on their news channels uh -huh. that she was missing in the May. Now, if you've seen my cases before, especially in the Moira Anderson, I find that very, very strange. Why... What happened in May 1957 for the BBC then to take it on? Or who was the, who was the BBC protecting to not take it on straight away? Mm. That's the question. Now we speak about paedophile rings. We all think, oh, Jimmy Savile could never yeah. be connected to anybody back 
here in Coatbridge or Airdrie. Well, you're wrong. Fred West was also connected to here as well. Later in life, Alex got shore, went down south with Liverpool connections and they all connected in one way or another, Rose West. Um, these type of people are all the same type of people, but sadly, another name that we're going to bring up shortly, this was under the carpet for a lot of people. <coughs> yeah. Like, sexual abuse happened daily, and it happened between church elders, the Catholic faith, everything, yeah. whether kids were told to shut up and respect their elders, and that's why people got away with it. And if you're watching this and you're a victim to whether it be this case or this triggers you in your own trauma trust that by speaking out it's going to change everything because that's why pe how people get away with it I'm just going to take a note of this guy just in case he helps us <laughs> let him go in front um, <laughs> can I turn this round? Well, I can't even turn you round I hope that's the right one <laughs> we are freezing <laughs> <laughs> we'll try. No, try. that's what we're trying to say that my sky looks a bit shifty um, yeah, <laughs> maybe. Um, no, I think it's alright. Well, yeah, maybe I mean the same thing. Um, he's probably thinking we're shifting. So we're walking back up where Moira would have walked down. Um, I think the next stop, I think we'll head to Cam Go. I don't get big vibes about there, but I think it's important that we go there because we want to be taking every footstep that she took. And I'll be honest with you, what our vibe for this part is. There was no trauma, I don't feel she bumped into anyone. I feel she walked down the hill at the base road and did head towards a bus. Now, another thing, the bus conductress who was on the bus that day moved to Canada about two years later and has never come back to the UK. Has never spoke about it. I just find that very, very strange. Mm. Um, <laughs> the case has been built up on the book. So again, we all stick to the rule of the book rather than Aye. thinking outside the box. And do you know what? See how all that was completely true. Moira Anderson would have been found by now. Yeah, she's not been. Something's missing. Um, and I think I'm the one to find it. <laughs> right, this is us at Carnbro. I'm just going to show you quickly. So I'm just sitting at the little bus stop just to give you an idea, because there was a witness that came forward and said that they seen a little girl being dragged. What was it dragged? Um, so on the afternoon of the 23rd of February 1957 near the Cairn yep, yep. um, he'd seen a man dragging a young girl by the arms the witness claimed that the girl looked like Moira Anderson and identified the man as Gartshore so Alex Gartshore was um, obviously identified at that point or they thought that's who it was but that's doesn't mean Heather we're saying meant we? I'm going to let you see the bus stop while we're chatting sorry we cut off there so this is the bus stop at Cairn Row but Heather, do you want to read that part out? Yeah, so apparently they had dug up the graveyard, there was no remains. So despite this disappointment, they renewed press attention that accompanied the search led to two new witnesses coming forward. The first witness alleged that as a young girl in Coatbridge, Gart Shore had exposed himself to her and Moira Anderson in the local park in 1956. And furthermore, that during this incident that he'd called Moira by name. Even more importantly, the second witness stated that late in the afternoon on the 23rd of February 1957, near the Cambro bus terminus, they had seen a man dragging a young girl by the arms. The witness claimed that the girl looked like Moira Anderson and identified the man as Gutshaw. So that's relatable. Yep, and what we've got to remember is, this is what me and Heather were saying, even if they had did, which they obviously have, did something wrong to Moira, did they go out to kill her? Because, again, back in those days, children weren't even believed when they did speak it out, so they were warned not to speak it out. So, to be fair, they get away with blue, like blue really marker. bad stuff yet all the time. Um, <coughs> The reason I thought it was important to come here is because of this witness statement. <laughs> yes, I do feel there's something in it. I'm going to do the spirit box quickly. Um, just bear with me. Moira, can you tell us anything about this location in Karen Row that connects to yourself? Right, I'm going to go with that. I'm going to trust my work in this. I got that as well. I just don't feel she was here. Mm -hmm. I don't feel Karen Bro had any connection to it whatsoever. What I do get about here is that this was quite... We know it goes without saying anyway, it was a man's world, but this is where the men congregated. Mm -hmm. So I feel there could have been a lot of talks afterwards. And I want to say, I even psychically get, there's three men that still know just now what happened. Mm -hmm. 
and are happy to take that to their grave. That sickens me, absolutely sickens me. If you get grandparents, great uncles, anything like that within this area, speak to them, ask them what they remember because it's to a point now that it's happened that long ago. Like, Aye. it's slim pickings if they can ever find any witnesses to tie this together, Aye. other than finding Moira herself. And the only way that's going to happen is when people speak up. Yeah. And people look through their, maybe their old grandfather or grandmother's things where people used to write a lot of things down, especially yeah. women, because they were too scared to speak out. Uh -huh. It's worth a thought. Right, so now we are heading to where the bus was spotted at the side of the road okay. with steamy windows. Yeah, okay. But again, kind of an unconfirmed sighting, but I feel very strongly that there was a connection with Moira there. It's not where she is, but I feel she was there, and I feel that's, this is where the case is going to start to turn in a bit more spooky, a bit more grim, but be prepared for what's going to come out in the spirit box, because we're going to take you to the forest, and we're going to take you to the Tarry Burn. Um, there's also a location in Glen Boyg. Now, I'm not going to cover it for the sheer fact that I like to think the cold case units watch these cases. I've brought up Glen Boyg once before. I think there's a massive, massive connection with Glen Boyg to someone who is connected to the Moira Anderson murder. Let's say it is a murder because I don't mm -hmm. think it's a missing person at this point. No. Um, well, it is a murder because they said if Alex got sure was alive that they would have charged him for her death. I just don't agree with it. Let's no. talk about it in the next part. Yeah. Remember, like, and comment, subscribe. <laughs> we just thought we'd show you the moon as we're heading to the Tarry Burn. Um, that is all your Jane Coat Ridge from the back music planes. Right, let's do it. I've lost the moon. There we are. <laughs> right, okay. Right, that's us. <laughs> so we have just made it on to Gertsherry Road to come on past the container base. Now, this is a road that the bus was known to be on. Right, okay. We're going to do the spirit box up here and then we're going to show you the Tarry Burn. I'm also going to take these into the wooded area where I do think there is relevance. Um, but we'll get on to the main part of the story. It is a bit creepy up here, I'm not going to lie. I get that a lot of men walked up here, like it. Looks as if, again, work going back and forth. But I've said this to Heather. I genuinely feel that a lot of people knew knew about Moira Anderson, especially the whole men side of things. Um, and I think a lot of people were scared to speak up, which would tell me who did that person connect to that was so powerful. And it's what I'm going to come on to the borough. Now, if you don't know what the borough is, the borough is the council. And I just feel there's a massive connection with the Moira Anderson case and the borough. And I think, again, well, what did Alex get sure have? Or who did he connect with in the borough? Now, write in the comments if you know this. Um, <coughs> again, this is a live case, just to remind you, actually, please get in contact with 101 or the cold case unit if you do have information that you think could help this case. It's not something like me can help this case in that respect, but please comment to the things that are fact on this as such um so this road is where the bus would have came now you've got to think blizzard snow it's why would you so why would you come up a road like this when this road takes you out to town head and you could easily come along the other way it was no I, it I'm was a milk i'm sure it was a milkman and his son i'm guessing they wouldn't have had the lights the, the street lights well there's a milkman and his son that apparently seen i'm sure it was a milkman and the son that apparently seen this out I'm actually like heavy, heavy. I'm freaking out. I'm not even gonna lie. So this is where we were going to park. Fuck. No bad language. Sorry, Please. sorry. Robbie said to me, "Like you better not be swearing in the live." Sorry, like, guys. I'm just a wee bit spooked. Just so, now. Sorry guys, I've just totally... Alright, we're going to... <laughs> Nearly dropped you. I can't see a thing because it's... Oh, there's a fence there. Woo! Right. <laughs> I think the sooner we do this and get out and the just better. get it done and dusted, yep, yep, I agree, let's do this. Just... <laughs> 
Was Moira Anderson here? Where do we need to go to find Moira Anderson? I feel very strongly that she was killed here, but I don't feel she's here. I want to say they're not happy that we're here. You heard a big splash in the tunnel, or yeah. that noise in the tunnel. That was a sign. Spirit, give me another sign if you don't want us to be here. Does anybody want to give us a sign that they are here? I want to get my car keys. I want my car keys in my hand with the door shut, don't you? I really don't feel good about it here. I don't. I feel so what I think is, I was going to go in there, but no, not today, not today, not any other day. <laughs> <laughs> what I do get is that she was killed here, and I get that she. They did put her in the tarry burn, but it didn't work. And Alex got sure was the fall guy. I, it, like, this is a paedophile ring. This was for the bus drivers, the Baxters, and I'm quite happy to stick and say that. Just psychically, I get it. The paedophile ring started in Coatbridge. It's the last place we're going to go to tonight, which would be Wifflet and Newland Street and School Street, right round there. There is so much to be said for that, but that's more than one case. That's your Fred West case. The West End Bar in Coatbridge, it's not something that's spoke about often. Oh, I'm so creeped out. There is a lot to be said for that around this as well. Um, again, this was a man's world back then, especially in 1957. But I do believe this paedophile ring started in 1949. Um, I want to say Bible John connects with something to do with all this too, but not to do with the paedophile ring, to do with locations. Again, everything ties in, more so than you ever think. Um, Coat Bridge is a much darker place than what people think, and for different reasons, different, different reasons. Um, they all then went down to Liverpool. I'm sure Fred West went down there as well at some point to check up. We'll check up before we go to the next location. Do you thought it'd be hard to take photos? I'm not even looking at them. I am just taking them and I'll tell you why. I said this to Heather. I think, see, it's not if you worth... do this, this corner. Yep, I'm going to, don't worry. <sighs> oh, I can't. Right, let's get in the car. Yeah, right, okay. <laughs> Is this road got any significance to Moira Anderson? Right. 
Spirit, give us a sign through the spirit box if you're with us. Tell us anything you can about this area. Anything. I'm going to park up here. Right, okay, so we are sitting in the car, obviously. I've just turned the spirit box off there. I feel that she, again, was at the tarry barn, but I see a tatty bag. And I've said it for day one, I see her being in pipes, and that's why I speak about the borough. And that's where we're going to end this case, is where I think she is, why I think she's there, and the history behind that area. Um, I want to say, again, I've done this case for four years now, um, and every time I go back to it, I find out something new every single time. But it's more flaws in the actual original so, case. Okay. Yep, definitely, definitely. And I think because we've been so focused on Karen Bro, the Tarry Burn, uh -huh. like they're all givens that could be. Now, one thing that struck to me was the best part. Yes. Now I don't feel sorry. I don't feel that she's there, but Dumbeth Park I feel was a hoaching ground for paedophiles. Yes. And especially back then, which was then bring you to Cliftonville, again we also after area in Coatbridge and and where you were earlier, uh -huh. where Moira's grand stayed, and yep. we are and we spoke about it. We're walking down how beautiful the houses were. Uh -huh. I don't see dark history there, but. We mentioned something earlier about the steelworks. I'm going to let you say that. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it says when Moira failed to return home on Saturday evening, a search party was organised by neighbours and the police. All the surrounding districts were combed and a careful search of Dunbreath Public Park was ordered. Bushes were probed and the slag hills. Was that, is it near the nearby ironworks were thoroughly searched? Let me see that. What does that word say? Slag Hills. Slag Hills. Um, near Put in the comments if you come to Cope Bridge and you know anything about Slag Hills. Um, near the nearby ironworks were thoroughly thoroughly searched, but no, but there was no sign of the twelve-year-old. In the days that followed, police would ask all managers of nearby cinemas to carefully search their premises just in case Moira had accidentally been locked in overnight. Then it just goes on to say about um, Andrew Anderson, Moira's brother, and the local Coke Bridge community came together in a desperate session to locate the girl. Uh, oh, this is quite interesting. A group of almost 80 corporation cleansing workers who had been on strike broke their protest to appear at a Coke Bridge police headquarters to offer their services in the search for Moira. Scores of people telephoned the police with their tips and sightings of Mo Moira, sending detectives to Shettleston, Gurick, even as far as Doncaster, following alleged sightings all came to nothing. So, here, this is what I want to touch on with this. The cleansing team, a team of eight, eight offering their services. Me and Heather were speaking about this. Were they connected to pipe works? Did, did they have control over the pipes? Because there was a pipe, it's not a pipe, it's a tunnel, down, now, we did a spirit box live, down where I'm going to take you to next, and I felt that she was there. I, I didn't do the Halloween live for Moira Anderson. It all just started to come through. And when I did my homework a few months later, that tunnel was closed off in 1957, shortly after Moira Anderson went missing. 
there's a lot to be said for that and I just yeah. feel very strongly about it so that's where we're heading to now. So we ended up here by mistake. We took the wrong turning but look at the amount of wasteland there. Like, you can only see it a little bit. I need to try and find my way back. Um, right here, they're taking them out. Just... I do feel something about this wasteland. I'll, now the railway's on our left right now. Um, and I don't know if this road takes us up to... If we kept going, it would take us to Glenboig. I'm not sure. We'll need to check it out. We're just trying to find our way back. Right. I knew where I went wrong. I knew exactly where I went wrong, to be fair. When it said 60. <laughs> It's oh, creepy up here though. It really is. Right, wish us luck. <laughs> Bye. Cut. Right, so we have just came down by Old Mountain Cemetery. I'm coming down the side part of it. Now there's a reason for this. Um, and this is why I want to come down here. Well, oh, that bit's shut off now. Right, okay. Along yeah, there, good. right, you used to be able to drive right along there. Or it's the other gates. Um, but... I feel very, very strongly about a massive connection to Moira Anderson. Now, I don't feel she was buried in the graveyard or she's in the graveyard. I don't feel that she's here. But what I do feel it's saying is somebody worked down here that has a connection to it. And I don't mean a grave digger. I want to say I get a man. Now, this is where it gets a bit... Wait, we'll park up for a second. Because I don't want to. Um, I get that somebody had like, pulled a favour. I've always said that. I don't know what the favour is, but it's something to do with disposing of Moira. And that's where the borough comes in. Uh -huh. And again, a man's world then. Yeah. So it was somebody that worked at the borough. That's what I get psychically, but not a grave digger. Somebody that had some sort of equipment that could have maybe, I don't know, like, boiled. Bigger oh one. God. I know. Um, now, again, I got a like a patty bag around what I can see her being in. Uh -huh. Like a brown bag. And it sounds silly, but we are down at the side part of Old Mountain Cemetery. This road, every time I think of Moira Anderson, I, it takes me down this road. Now, we used to walk this road with my granny because we well, just used to live up the hill. So it's mad some of the connections and um <laughs> my granny like to take us to the graveyard don't ask no wonder <laughs> we're all gubbed in the head by the way sorry Sadie um but like I've got a lot of memories down here and even when I was young I didn't know I was psychic I used to always feel really dark at this bit and we didn't always walk out this gate nine times time we walk out the top gate but sometimes my granny'd like to go and see um her granny's grave right so it was down the bottom so she, to save the hill she would walk this way back mm -hmm. up and I always remember even when I was wee, I didn't feel good about it. So it's always stuck in my head. I mean, I read the book, and I read that book when I was about 12, mm. 13. I know, first ever book I read, and the only reason I enjoyed it more was because I knew the area. So I could understand Laird Street, because that's where my primary school was, uh -huh. or Eglinton Street, all these places. Um, but I just feel very, very strongly about here, but more to do with the person who's really responsible for it, and I'm... Um, always going to stick by what I get and I trust in my work like I do not think Alex Gert Shore was fully responsible for Moira Anderson's disappearance that whole word n n I can't say it uh, <laughs> oh, what's, what's the word again they were doing no so well no, okay. no notoriety 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 like that's a trait that's a trait wanting to be known for something yeah and that's what I get with Alex Gert Shore and that trait runs down that line where I think that it just frustrates me, the whole case frustrates me, because I think, and again, I can imagine the whole case unit have started from the bottom and started it again, but I think really starting from the bottom and, like, when we were going along that waste ground at the Tarry Burn there, or when we took the wrong turn, mm, I just can't help but think that didn't happen for nothing either. Yeah. A, I'm worried, uh, this is one of the areas that I don't know why I feel like this, but that's why I brought you here, because I hope it makes relevance later on down the line, because this is a live case, and... I will always, always shed light in the Moira Anderson case for the sheer fact that other than myself 
in the, the foundation in her name. There's nothing online for this girl, nothing at all. And it's a case that it's a 11 year old girl, that's what it boils down to. Just a wee girl. So sad, so sad. Um, so now I'm going to take you to where I've predicted she is. And again, the tunnel was shut off close to after Moira Anderson went missing. And I'll tell you, we were laughing like it's a big ass to shut the fool of that. <laughs> In and out the road and the Joe Carry shaking in and out of Cope Ridge, but um, just because I've said I think there's something under there, but I know and I psychically know people know about this, yeah. and especially with the tunnel, it's not about digging up a road, it's about looking back through the borough work. True. We've already touched on the name James, but I'm just going to give the names that I get. I get the name Patrick or Patty with something, and that name's never come up around this case. There is going to be movement in this case in the next two months to two years. I think two months. Um, loads of men knew about this, but some of their wives knew, but again under the carpet. I've done a lot of whistleblowers in the last three years we've done this case, talking about paedophile rings and Cope Ridge victims. Aye. People that can, like, people have already been put away for it, but they've never came forward and said they were a victim too. It's so freaking sad and Unfortunately, back then, even the women knew about it and put it under the table. It was said that they thought at the beginning that it might have been Moira's dad. I don't get that. Don't get that at all. Definitely don't, but it was something I read. Right, let's go to the next location. <laughs> we just thought before we left here, we were driving up, and we're sitting outside one of the gates that are open. So behind this wall <laughs> is where the grave was exhumed. I'm going to be really up front. Well, we did this case originally. I took the newspaper clippings, the photos, exactly where they exhume because they've taken the name off the grave. I could get into all the names, but I don't see the point for the sheer fact that that's us just getting back in the old case again. And I'm yeah. sorry, this video is important to me that I put it out the right way where it's leaving people open-minded, to uh -huh. be open-minded to what's happened. I'm going to do the spirit box in a second, but the, so I checked the photos me and my friend Stacey, and we actually pinpointed and found the grave. And they've taken the name off it, but I got nothing with that, nothing at all. I said to you already, a graveyard, you could class it as haunted Halloween and stuff like that. Well, it is Halloween, <laughs> but it's dead bodies. There's no soul in there. You should be more worried about your house. Right, let's do this. Thanks. Right. <laughs> Sorry. Spirit, do we need to know anything about this location regarding Moira Anderson? <gasps> the police know. I knew that. Hmm. Fuck it, okay. Sorry. Stop and start. So I, I knew that. the police knew something. Well, I don't mean the police now. Do you want me to saw this? No. Okay. But you feel really close. Is it mega close? Like. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's there. <laughs> Where is Moira Anderson? In the pipe. Shut the front door. What pipe? She's naked. And you oh. said to me. I said to you. Where's the did, clothes? Did, did, did Nothing's ever been clothes. found. Nothing has ever been found. Stabbed me. The what? Stabbed me. Which this is, is the most we've had out the spirit box on. Fuck off. Shh, why are you stop? Are we back on? Yeah, I'm yeah just they just kicked ourselves there. <laughs> right, let's do one more tree, um, one more spirit box here and then head to location. <laughs> Oh, 
the entrance. What about the entrance? We're at the entrance. Can you turn that down? Right, wait a minute, just to show that gate. That could be somebody's house, to be fair, but... Right, okay. Yeah, that, that can that, that to me. Okay, obviously you guys don't realise it, but to me that would validate something. Stop the now. Um, we were just confirming where we should see this or not. <laughs> so I do have my own theory that somebody done someone a favour, and they were given a favour back. We maybe premises like given a building or something to do with the borough. They maybe even change their products um, that's what I get for here so I just think that I think there were three people involved the person we're speaking about I've also said and there's a Glen Boy connection with something I see an older man sitting at a house I've said this so many times sitting on a bench looking out and he's reflecting and he's connected to Moira Anderson's murder I want to say, and I said this to Heather, I don't feel she suffered as such. I feel there's a big part of Rahitmo involved. But when we were at the other location, Heather said that she had a bit of a stab in her leg. And we were talking about it coming to this location. I was like, I keep getting like the railings like when you're saying about stabbing. It's came through in that. Um, but I don't feel it's a torso. I feel it was the legs. And that's what it was? It was in... But I don't feel it was torture. So it makes me think, why, why would... Why would... Like they just stab her legs. But I don't know if they're trying to tell us something or I don't know. Let's go to location, we'll find out. Right, this is us. So we are up at the kind of industrial that then goes on to the Bath of Firewood. Um, but we're just going to walk down here because underneath us, pipes run from here directly across to Coat Hill Hospital. And that's where the tunnel is that shut down. So the reason I want to bring you here first is because originally this is where the, the like ghost hunt took place and we were up in the property up there and that's where it all came out in the spirit box. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to get back in the car and go to Coat Hill and we'll do the spirit box there because I feel like where we were that night is why that came up but I don't feel exactly that's where she is. So let's do it. So we are at Coat Hill Hospital, right the way around here. I truly believe the tunnel that ran under here, all the way up, is connected to where Moira Anderson is. Um, we're going to do the spirit box, we're just going to stand over here and do it. Again, we're just trying to be respectful. Last thing people need on a Saturday night when they're watching a Saturday night TV is us. Oh. Out with the spirit box. We were going to put it in a speaker, but I'm going to be honest with you, at that last location, I don't think any of us were brave enough to do it. No. Spirit, can you tell me if Moira Anderson's here? Yeah. Is she down this way? Yeah. Is there anything we need to know or the name of the people that took Moira Anderson's life? Not 
So this is us, as you can see, at Coat Hill Hospital. It's freezing. It's half past ten at night. It's actually not it's twenty eleven at night. <laughs> Jesus. Um, this is where I believe Moira Anderson to be. I believe there's a tunnel connected. I believe there was three men connected. I want to say she was taking on the bus. I see the hit me with something as well. Heather made a really good point. The stabbing and the maybe like the nettle feeling could have been her being dragged through some sort of kind of bush, which again would lead to the tarry burn. I feel originally she was in the tarry burn, but three to four days down the line, something changed. Um, Alex Gitshore was never interviewed at that time because he was out in bail for something else. Again, I'll leave the speculation and again, he's apparently admitted to it, where the procreator fiscal said that if he was alive today, they would charge him. I think he had something to do with it, but I don't think he was the only one. And I believe to this day, other people do know. I've loved doing this case because I've wanted to bring it back to life. Coming to locations and... Sorry, it totally cut off. <laughs> Can I just say thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the case. Are there anything else you need to cover within the case? I don't think so. Like, I think he's... Please comment below, tell us what you think. Um, I look forward to your comments. Please like and subscribe. I will do an end video once I edit this. But again, I'll take some... I'm not going to take photos here. I'll add the photos in that we've already taken. Um, but again, sleep well, stay safe, take care.